Hey YouTube, Brutal Death by here once again, and today I wanted to talk to you guys about what I think is necessary to elevate yourself from a mediocre battlefield player to someone who is competent, aware, effective, and just an overall good player all around. Notice when I say being a good player though, I'm not referring to being a great player, as many you know, players tend to conflate the two. Indeed, many players think that being a great player or even a good player means you have to have a 4.0 KD and all these crazy stats. But becoming good like that takes often years of work and practice to attain such a high degree of accuracy and gun skill, as well as it requires advanced knowledge and extensive experience with the game's meta, maps, game mechanics, so as to apply them with ruthless, merciless efficiency. But in order to become a great player, you must first need to become good. So today's commentary, I'm just going to touch on what I think actually constitutes being a good player. Take myself and the footage you see here for example. I consider myself a pretty good player, but by no means do I consider myself a truly great player. I play on consoles, so I do not have access to the precision and dexterity that a mouse affords to aim my weapon, which makes rapid target acquisition, corner checking, and accurate flick shotting significantly easier. Now there are players out there who can do that, don't get me wrong, with disgustingly accurate, uh, you know, quick reflexes when it comes to using controller joysticks. Players like the Mark of J, who's a Call of Duty YouTuber, comes to mind, and there are many other players too, and you know, I'll just be the first to admit that I'm not one of those guys. Those guys are beastly pub stompers, and I would consider my accuracy and aiming to be fairly average, you know, not super remarkable. I'd call my aiming just, you know, it's pretty solid and competent, maybe a little bit above average, with occasional bouts of potato aim like we all tend to suffer from time to time, but nothing to write home about. So, with my own limitations as a player in mind, I have to rely on other things to do well in this game. You know, things that I've talked about in my other Battlefield videos, like, you know, your map knowledge, taking advantage of empty map lanes to flank the enemy and back cap their positions, being aware of enemy spawn directions and flow, what weapon I'm using at the time and its engagement distance limitations, proper bursting and recoil control, and you know just having the weapon knowledge that I have in mind, utilizing optimal tactical positioning to give myself the upper hand if possible, and being aware of what my team is doing, whether they're helping me push onto objectives so I can pincer maneuver and squeeze enemy positions from multiple angles to soften them up, or you know if my teammates are sitting back, getting killed, or just being generally useless pigs. The list goes on. And despite all these factors and many more, I still die. Like, a lot. I die a lot in this game. Maybe I'll get impatient or too aggressive and rush into vulnerable positions without thinking. Maybe I'm, you know, using a gun that I'm just not very good with and I start losing standard firefights with. Or maybe I get flanked because I'm unaware of an enemy's position or they throw a good impact grenade on my position and we get cleared off of an objective or I get flushed out from cover and blown up by, you know, the Zeppelin behemoth or an airburst mortar comes and gets me or some random bullshit happens to me like a plane comes crashing down from the sky or I run into an invisible wall glitch that kills me. I've actually had that happen to me before, believe it or not. I could list off just a thousand ways I've died in this game ad nauseum. But my point is that, you know, really great players learn to control these risk factors as much as they possibly can at all times, and then utilize their superior game skills to make a difference. So to put it bluntly, you're not going to become a great player overnight, and I really wouldn't stress it too much as it takes time and applied knowledge and practice, but you'll eventually get there if you work at it. But what does it take to just arise above the mediocre, directionless, and uninspired masses of Battlefield? In my estimation, it takes surprisingly little conscious effort to be a good player who actually contributes to your team. I often play with friends who are new to the Battlefield franchise and don't generally know what the hell they're doing, but I teach them how to fulfill simple, vital, team-based roles such as healing, reviving, and restocking ammo. I get them into that habit very early on, and because of that, they are better than the vast majority of Blueberry Medic and support players that I encounter out there. I'll point out that even though they may not have had a positive KDR when the match is over, because they contributed in that specific way with team-based actions, they actually often came out ahead near the top of the scoreboard and were given accolades of recognition for healing, restocking, and reviving. So it's clearly not just about your kill-death ratio that purely defines your skill in this game. But that's not to say that kill-death ratio isn't an important metric to track in your performance as a player. It's just as important for just different reasons than most players typically think of it as. It's true that if you die more than you kill, you are actually harming your team in as much as you're giving the other team more points that your kills aren't cancelling out. But people tend to think of a kill-death ratio as this 
purely objective gold standard of gun skill and individual skill overall. Indeed, they think of it as an amalgamation of their good decisions, experience, elite tactics, and twitch reflexes. Let me just dispel this myth, though, and say that that is not always the case, especially in a game that is as incongruous, class-based, and asymmetrical in its warfare as Battlefield 1. A player in a plane or a tank, for instance, is on a different level of play and has several distinct advantages over a standard infantry player on the ground. Indeed, a player who focuses exclusively and selfishly on their KD ratio can actually end up harming their team more than helping it, even harming their team significantly, dare I say. For instance, a tank driver in Conquest that is willing to risk their life to push onto and clear off an objective is much more valuable to their team than a tank driver who just hangs back in the distance, avoids armor confrontations, and just farms infantry kills that will continuously just respawn from capture points that they aren't pushing up on or trying to capture. That tank driver could have a 60 KD ratio and that would have done almost nothing to help your team capture points while depriving your team of a tactical piece of armor that could have been used to capture points. I'd also like to point out that KD can be entirely subjective for an entirely different reason, and that reason is revive trains in this game. I notice that if I don't have a dedicated healer in my squad who consistently revives, and I'm being an infantry player, my KD tends to fall anywhere between 1.5 and 2.5. Maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, I'm just trying to give you guys a general idea. But I have, if I have a dedicated medic who consistently revives me every time I go down, my KD significantly inflates from there, as getting revived from death actually can cancels out that death on your score. So it's not hard, especially for Battlefield YouTubers or streamers, to get a little entourage of medics to follow them around and come to their aid, especially as this garners attention and praise from their beloved senpais. I'm not knocking this by any means, as it is actually a quite a good strategy, and usually these players are quite good themselves, and it's very effective and helpful for the YouTuber or streamer that's uh, playing. But just something to keep in mind that not everybody has the privilege of that, and you know, us regular plebs, we have to rely on the many useless and oblivious uh, blueberry medics on our team. <laughs> so rather than focusing on KDR as the end-all be-all, you know, the conventional gold standard of first-person shooter acumen, I much rather focus on the metric score per minute as a battlefield player. And that's where KD factors in, because you can't get a good score per minute if you're dead all the time looking at the spawn screen. You see, because Battlefield awards so many points to those who play the objective and perform team-based actions, far more than just killing... You you know, alone nets, it's safe to assume that those with a high score per minute contribute the most to their team and make the biggest difference on the battlefield. Whether you're a tank driver pushing infantry off the point, or an assault player helping to take the point but pressure the enemy vehicles, or you're a plane providing air support, or any other role performing team-based actions and objective-based actions, under this paradigm of team play and contribution, a KDR only becomes important and necessary insofar that it helps you to stay alive to achieve a proper score per Per minute. And indeed, the true dilemma every Battlefield player, including my own, has to wrestle with and confront is the question of whether they're willing to sacrifice a portion of their KDR if it means pushing up and taking the objective. I encourage players to have the balls to push onto the objective to cut off the enemy's spawn, even if you don't have as sexy a, of a KDR for doing it. I can assure you that you are far more valuable to your team, and I would much rather have a player like you in my squad if you play this way. So in summation, I would just like to list three key things I think are needed to become a good battlefield player and rise above the mediocre, zombie-like, uninspired masses. Number one, prioritize on score per minute over individual KDR. Number two, kill more than you die. And number three, contribute to your team by playing the objective and doing team-based actions, especially reviving, dropping ammo, and shooting flares. If you can fulfill these three conditions consistently, then I consider you a good player and would rather have you on my team than any kill whore who doesn't contribute otherwise. And if you're a new or struggling player who is having a hard time consistently turning out a positive KD, consider familiarizing yourself more with the weapons of the game, analyze what weapons you're strong and weak with, and take a look at where you're struggling and focusing on improving as much as you can. Practice if you need to. But even if you can only fulfill numbers 1 and 3 of those conditions, you're onto a great start and the gun skill will come with time. Just be patient. 
Now, if you're starting out in Conquest or Operations, any score per minute between 600 to 800 is actually above average, from what I've learned. Anything above 1,000 is very beastly, and anything north of 1,500 score per minute is pretty much Super Saiyan Harambe beast mode, so keep that in mind. And that's really just going to be the bulk of my content today. The only other comment I'd like to add is that I really hope that DICE in the future delineates score per minute among different game modes, as players who play a lot of Team Deathmatch are going to have their score per minute diminished since that mode is basically purely based on kills and KDR and there simply just aren't as many points available in that game mode compared to operations and conquest or even rush. So I hope DICE rectifies that in the future. I understand that they're trying to keep player stats accessible and streamlined and really easy to read but I just think at some point I think people are going to need to get a brain and learn how to analyze statistics especially for such a complicated game as Battlefield. And that's really what I had for you guys today. Do you guys like what you heard today? today? Do you agree or disagree? My question that I'd like to pose to you is what do you think constitutes a good Battlefield player? If you guys want to leave a comment down below, you know what to do. But until next time, this has been Brutal Death Pie, and I'll speak with you guys again soon. Have a good one. I'm out.